Hi gang, it's Wayne McPhail for Mondoville, and today I'm taking a look at the Panasonic GH1. This is a micro four-thirds camera. You can see it's a little smaller in body size than a regular DSLR. That's because this camera doesn't have a mirror and pentaprism, the thing that actually reflects the light up into an optical viewfinder in a regular DSLR. And that makes it possible for the body to be smaller and also for the lens that fits on here to be smaller. Now let's take a look at the lens for a second. This is a 14 by 140 um, so it goes from slight uh, wide angle to telephoto on this particular camera. And you can see when I extend it out, part of the problem with this, this is, almost looks like Thor's hammer here. Again, you can see the small body size, but when you've got a lens this size or even bigger, that's not necessarily an advantage because you want to have a good balance between the front and the back of the camera. And having a body this size and this weight isn't necessarily a good thing. That said, this is a really solid camera. It comes with a uh, viewfinder in the back here that actually pivots around um, and can plug in either um, this way to close off or swings around this way and displays uh, a live view so you can see what's actually coming through the lens in real time, which a lot of uh, DSLRs have these days. And of course, on a point and shoot camera, it's, it's the way it, it always has been. Uh, but it also can display information here, your f-stop and other stuff there. Now this viewfinder, as I said, is not really an optical viewfinder. It is a mini display in here, and it's a very good display. It's very sharp, it's very bright, it makes it easy in good light to focus really easily, uh, crisp, crisp image. The problem with it is, because it's not an optical viewfinder, it actually slows down frame rate in low light situations. And if you're shooting at ISO 1600 or 3200 in a dim area, it can really make it problematic to track action. Um, so that's a real disadvantage of this, even though it creates a, a smaller camera. This camera can also shoot HD video up to 1080p video, which is really good quality in ABC HD format or lower formats, uh, sort of MP4 formats that you can also shoot in. Um, it has a uh, built-in stereo microphone here, which is really good, and it also has uh, an ability to jack in a microphone on the other side here and always a good idea if you're shooting high resolution video to be actually able to capture good sound externally as well. It takes SD cards on the side here not compact flash which is which is good I think uh, and a bit um, unusual but good. Um, over here you've got the HDMI port and another video out port on the side here. The HDMI port would be great for porting your high resolution video out to a, a large uh, HD TV. The camera has a mega OIS uh, shake reduction on all the lenses. It's not intra-body uh, shake reduction, it's, it's on the lens itself. Um, and these lenses come off, the exchange, interchangeable lenses. You can see the sensor in there. Now that sensor is really highly exposed. It's even more exposed than on a regular DSLR. And that's an issue for DSLRs because you can get dust on there. On this sensor, it would be a real dust magnet and really close to the surface like that. It's sort of kind of scary to have a sensor that close to the, the front of the camera. And that sensor is, well, a regular DSLR is about 83% bigger. The sensor is 83% bigger on this camera, which means that um, although this is much a much, much bigger sensor than on a regular point-and-shoot camera, it's not as good as a DSLR. And you're going to see that in the... Uh, higher ISOs, you're going to see more noise in the, the lens or on the, the images that come out of this. When I've shot with this camera in low light, it's been pretty good, but after about ISO 800, you're starting to see some desaturation, you're starting to see some noise in the image. ISO 1600 is still good. The ISO 3200, which just can go up to in, in camera, is serviceable if you need to get a picture and there's no other way to get it, but it's not ideal. There's a lot of uh, modes you can, you can select on here and you can actually build sort of a custom mode up and there's a mode that allows it to sort of really sense whatever the situation is and pick, pick the best mode for you. So all around, this is a really good camera. The problem I see with it is this, that if I was going from a prosumer camera like say the uh, Canon G9 or the more recent G11 to a DSLR or to one of these cameras, I would really wonder about um, spending the money. This is a very expensive camera. This is about $1,900 Canadian right now. And you can get a, uh, say, a Pentax KX for about $699 or $700. So, and with a bigger sensor. So you really, really would want to have to 
uh, want to have the smaller body size to really go for a camera like this. And if you really wanted to, if you really like the micro four thirds format and were really concerned about size, you might actually want to consider the Panasonic GF1, which is the smaller brother to this camera. It's actually a body size about like a a G9 or a G11, the Canon G9 or G11. Uh, it doesn't have an optical or a, an electronic viewfinder but it has a lot of the features of this camera so you might want to take a look at that, that as well. So if size matters to you and you want to move beyond your point and shoot camera to a sort of a DSLR experience, this is a really good camera to consider especially if you want to shoot HD video but you also might want to look at the GF1 and you also might want to look at entry level DSLRs that are cheaper and will also deliver really quality images and video. From Mondoville, this is Wayne McPhail. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.